Hello and welcome to Letway Lads episode 2. I'm Sean. I'm Will. And we're here in Ye, which is a town 250 kilometres outside where we're based in Yangon. Um, it's in Mon State, which is one of the heartlands of Letway. And we were here to see the Myanmar Thailand USA Challenge event. Yeah, not quite as catchy of a name as Battle Bones, but I mean, I guess it's a work in progress. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe this, we, we were talking last week that we wanted more of the real Letway, maybe, you know. Yeah, we've we got a bit of that. We've got a bit of that, definitely. So, how about that venue, Will? It was intense. Yeah, it was absolutely packed to the rafters, and there was, however many the venue was supposed to have, there was more there than there should have been. Yeah, I don't know, but their fire fire safety standards may have been slightly suspect there. <laughs> For sure, and uh, I enjoyed like the, the bleachers that they had there, it was There's like... Some rows of bamboo laid up for people to just pop a squat on. Yeah, even looking at the construction of it from outside, when it was just these kind of stilts, <laughs> like that was keeping up a yeah. lot of weight, like, yeah, I'm glad that we were not on those ones, but... Um, so, the main event was a WLC champion. Yeah, welterweight champion Solon U. Before we'd even come to Myanmar, we had uh, seen some Solon U videos and he impressed us pretty fast through the videos. Yes, yeah. we were, when you're looking at Letway, I mean, the thing that puts it into a different category than some of the other combat sports is the headbutts for a lot of people. And Solon U enjoys a headbutt or two. Yeah, or three. Man. And he was facing a Thai guy called Kompech. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, uh, Kompech had some early success. Yeah, well, I mean, I've seen, I've seen people say about Solanu um, that he often takes a bit of damage in the first couple of rounds, but, you know, almost inevitably he comes back quite strong and... Uh, That's what we saw. That is what we saw. I mean, <laughs> like, I, you know, I've been developing, you know, admiration for Solo New and I was talking to a couple Burmese people and they were asking me like well why do you like Solo New you know like, oh, well, why Solo New and I, I thought about it and I answered like when he fights he's just he's a very very proactive fighter like he's aggressive but I mean pr I think proactive is a better word just because he's always moving forward mm. on somebody he's always closing the distance he's always marching them back into the ropes and like I, I like that I like to see a fighter who you know just has this like iron will of marching forward. So I find it very impressive. Shades of uh, Justin Gaethje a little bit in MMA, mm. where like he'll just march, that walk people down. He doesn't doesn't mind taking a few digs as long as he can get his own in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, he's there's no. I mean, it, with Letway in general, you don't see a lot of tim timid kind of fighters. You know, it's a real like swanging and banging kind of art form. And uh, but Solanu really does take it to the logical extreme. Yeah, uh, yeah. He he won, by the way, Solanu. Uh, he won the main event to rapturous applause from the Burmese audience. I mean, that place lit up like more than any any event really at the at the Battle Bones. Like that place was popping, man. They were lifting the roof, chanting Solanu's name. Like mm -hmm. it was really exciting. Yeah, and the the t we t got to see in the main event the fabled two-minute recovery sequence. That's right. So there's this rule on that way that the first time you get knocked out. Uh, or at a different time, but if you get knocked out, your team's allowed to come in and call for a timeout, which is like two minutes, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. And you get two minutes to kind of rest, revive yourself, as it were, and then get thrown back back in the ring, which is pretty wild. Yeah. It's pretty pretty intense. And we saw that a few times yesterday, including Compatch against Solonir. Do you think it's kind of like a like an honor and etiquette kind of thing to get back in there or a pride thing or even for entertainment purposes like they're pressured to keep going? I feel that that maybe the origins came as an honor as an honor thing that you know that being able to at least to, to ride it out to a draw like from the people that we've talked to they, they've said that there's a lot of honor involved in that you know if you if you can not be Put away, you know. If you can come, if you can come back and and, and hold hold in there, sure. It, you you do sort of win your honor back. Um, yeah, it's worth mentioning that in comparison to the last WLC event, this event was following traditional lightweight rules, which means no draws, or sorry, no decisions. <laughs> yeah, no decisions. No decisions. There are draws, and 
How did you feel about that compared to the decision system? Um, I felt better about it. I felt like we were watching real Letway, you know? I felt that like we were like really getting, getting to see what brought us to Myanmar in the first place and, and, uh, and see, you know, those traditional rules in action, which is, it, it's really something to see, you know? I mean, we, we, we'll, we'll talk a bit more about like the WLC versus this later on, but yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it. Um, you know, it was something new, it was something uniquely for Letway. It was, yeah. yeah. And personally, like, I felt very little dissatisfaction as a viewer from seeing a draw. Like, it felt like great. These guys both toughed it out for, you know, three rounds and they earned the draw. And, like, I don't know. I think if, you, if, if someone views that as being less entertaining, that seems a very superficial reading of a draw result to me in a sport like this. Definitely, definitely. And we saw, we did see a few draws that, you know, clearly one person dominated. But, you know, then there's the respect to the guy for holding in. We see a guy get knocked down, but he still comes, he gets up and he gets up and he gets up and then like he fights it to the end. I mean, the crowd are in no doubt who won that fight, but he did, they didn't win. You know, that guy- yeah, By that the guy spirit of Letway, they did not do enough to win the fight. Exactly. Right? Which is, that's really fascinating. and. You know, it's it's rough, it's tough, but you know, it's part of why we like it. You mm, know, um, but going back real quick to Solanu, like one of my favorite moments was when uh, I don't remember what kicked it off exactly, but so between the Burmese fighters and the Thai fighters, there's not a lot of love lost. Uh, yes. There's definitely national pride on the line, to say the least. Uh, Mon State is very close to the border with Thailand. Yeah. So a lot of the Thai fighters are, I imagine, they're popping over for the day pretty much for a fight. And they would have like one corner with a Thai flag on it and one corner with a Burmese flag on it. And so this Thai guy that Solonu was fighting, like at some point there's like a slight break in the fight and the Thai guy started like kind of prancing around the ring a bit, jumping on the ropes and you know, all the Burmese were jeering of course. Um, and then they resumed the fight, and then it took about 30 seconds for Solanu to just march, march him down and knock the shit out of him and floor him after that point, which is when he took his time out. That was the first, <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, that was the first, <laughs> the first break, right, yeah. It's like, wow, you're playing with fire there, man, taunting Solanu. <laughs> I mean, there was, he was supposed to stay in the same hotel as the guy who organized the event, but then he heard that there was Thai, Thai people staying in the same hotel as him, and he was like, fuck this, and then he came to the one that we were staying in. Yeah, so like you say, no love lost there at all. It was a real, um, you know, it was a national pride event, which I think added an extra layer of, yeah. of, uh, of intensity to it. And I mean, full credit to Kampesh the Thai, I mean, that guy was, tough like he was really tough like yeah. I mean not only the two minute timeout that he came back from but you know he was getting smacked around and he'd be like bring it bring it bring it you know mm -hmm. he, like to, to even take that much damage from a fighter as powerful as Solon it was very impressive not to mention the balls that he had come into a place like yay and Solon is from Mon State and uh, you know so we got this this hope this hometown boy and he's basically going to the crowd like, fuck all you you know? Like, I'd say the balls on that guy, man. Hey, nothing but respect, really, like, fair play to him. Um, yeah, so about the, I mean, another Mon State hero is, uh, of course, Tun Tun Min. Yeah, so Tun Tun Min is, along with Tutu, who we were talking about before, he's one of the premier stars of modern Letwe. Um, and funnily enough, I was reading an anecdote that Tutu and Tun Tun Min, uh, people have long wanted them to fight together, but they actually won't take a fight together because they're friends. That's right, right. yeah. <laughs> Which is cool. Friendship gotta, transcends that way. Gotta respect a good bromance. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, Tun Tun Min was there in attendance, and he also had a fighter coming out of his gym who was uh, Char... Char Tway. Yeah. Char Tway, who seems to be his protege. Uh, we were told he 
he was voted the best young fighter in Myanmar last year and he is only 16 years old. 16 years old with a head full of ginger hair and yeah also he was fighting uh, a Thai fighter who okay so we have to say that there's no English information anywhere for these events. Not online, not on the place. There's one website called Letway Schedule run by a fella out of uh, Netherlands. The Netherlands, yeah. Thank you very much. If you yeah. see this thing, man, you've been such a good, huge help to us. Awesome guy. He's putting together a really useful resource. Uh, I'll link it in the description if you want to find out about local Letway events. But that's where we were able to get some English information, but he didn't have any name for this Thai fellow that Char Tway was fighting. Mm -hmm. So no disrespect to him, but we'll call him the, he was blue, right? He was the, the, the bl he was in the blue corner, which seemed to be the Thai corner. And then right. the, the Burmese fighters were fighting out the red corner with sure. the, both their respective flags mm. um, on, on either one. So uh, what did you think of that fight? I thought that quite similar to the event that we reviewed last week, the, the top two, the co-main and the main, were a real like class above the rest of the cards. Not, not to even say that there were some great car fights on this card, but just the movement of this kid, uh, like he could land kicks from great from a long distance away. He had like very a lot of length on his kicks. He had this like upper body movement to dodge like the high kicks he was coming with, which we hadn't seen anyone else in the event up to that point exhibiting that kind of skillful movement. Most people would just absorb the the strikes with like a block, but he was doing some some fucking ninja shit, like just back, like swinging out of the way of things, then coming back with his counters. I mean, he had a good arsenal too, uh, Charatwe. He had the he had the kicks. I mean, they were throwing a lot of leg kicks in that fight. He was throwing leg kicks. He was throwing high kicks. He was. Uh, swinging punches, he was throwing elbows, and he even got a few headbutts in there. You know, yeah. like not, he wasn't throwing them willy-nilly though, he was waiting for the openings. Very no, smart. It, and his movement in general was very elusive, like he could, he would, his footwork was good, he was like in and out very quickly and just very hard to hit as well as like seemingly landing his own attacks at will. Um, and he had your favorite moment of the event, didn't he? <coughs> That's right, there's one part where near the end where he just started marching the guy down um, and it was it was such a great moment so he basically he was just hitting him with all sorts of different different strikes different kicks elbows one after the other in perfect rhythm marched him about three quarters of the way around the ring and something that was really great about the atmosphere during that moment was uh, there's like an announcer guy at this event right and who you know it does all the announcing and whatnot but also during the fight whenever someone's hit or something, he'll go like, ha, ha. And, uh, you know, just him doing that with escalating vigor in his haws, you know, as each blow hit, like it was in perfect rhythm and the crowd just would cheer louder and louder with each one till they ended up going fucking nuts. And like right at the end of that sequence, they were right in the corner I was shooting at, they came right in front of me and whoa. I mean, that wasn't quite when he finished him, but I love to see like a rhythmic, powerful attack like that. It's one of the most impressive type of things you'll see in combat sports, I think. It was a really beautiful blitz. And like you said, I mean, it, it was, the dude was covering up and just, you know, hoping waiting, that it would end. Waiting for it to end. <laughs> like, just hoping, much, it would, yeah. hoping that it would end. But it didn't. He just kept on coming with like, you know, and he'd open up that and then then fucking work the body once he's covering his head and then your man drops the head and he's coming in with an elbow. It's just, it was super impressive. And like this, again, this kid is fucking 16. Yeah, I couldn't, like, be I couldn't believe it when I heard it. I was like, yeah. are you serious? Yeah. Like, scary 16 year old I've seen in a minute, dude. Yeah, man, <laughs> honestly, like, 
You know, I, I like to fancy my chances against most 16 year olds on the planet, but that guy would beat the absolute shit out uh, of both yeah. of us. Like, I'd say so. Yeah. I'd say so. So yeah, he's a, he's a very interesting fighter. Um, he thinks he's got big things out of him. Definitely. I'm really, really curious to follow his, his story and his rise. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Um, yeah, so the, the, another fight, the sixth fight. Again, we uh, don't have names for these ones. This was a bit of a short one, wasn't it? Uh, it was rough, man. I felt quite bad for the the uh, the red shorts fella because he just didn't have much, man. I don't know what that was about. Like he looked like he was in good shape. Like that's it. I, yeah, I, I I'm kind of bad for like I, I judge the physiques when they come out, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you're you're a student of the I'm, male I'm body. I'm a student of the male body, <laughs> as they say, you know. Like uh, so, when this guy came out, he's got he, he had impressive pectorals, you know. He was in a, he was he was in a very shredded form. And I was thinking like, oh shit, this guy's probably got some power, you know, he's got some fucking, he's got some muscles on him. And I was, I had it in my, my thing ahead as like, oh, he's going to knock this guy out. But again, it's showing that uh, I don't know what I'm fucking talking about. Appearances so. can be deceptive. His appearances can be deceptive indeed. And he, in fairness to him though, he didn't really get much of a chance to show what he was about because he got rocked yeah, badly started. very early. <laughs> From there, he was just standing up. Like, I mean, again, like these guys are so tough. Like, I mean, we have some shots I'll put up of, you know, his face, and you can see him like doing his best to regain his composure after he gets knocked down. But yeah. just yeah, he he pretty much stood up to get knocked down for the rest of that fight. This is a short one. I mean, very impressive by the blue shorts, no doubt about that. Like he was delivering really heavy blows. Yeah, and in all, all these fights that we've talked about so far, we got to see the two minutes uh, of recovery time, right? Where there was yeah. two, two knockdowns in this one, and this, this one came after about 30 seconds. Uh, All right. Well. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of Burmese culture there for you. Yeah, right. Uh, all right, well, I think we're back. So, uh, that's about all that's to be said about that last fight anyway, I think. Yeah, it was the shortest fight of the night. Um, it's short, yeah, the shortest fight of the night. And I f that my heart goes out for the red shorted fellow because I, he didn't really get to show what he was about. Um, that's what happens in, in this kind of sport, though. It's you get yeah, you get yeah. rocked early, man, and you're you know, you're a shell. You got you're you're not that you're not all there, and the dude is fresh as fuck. You know, all he has to do is pick his spots, and and you're done. Mm -hmm. like, and then uh, we got to see something that we've been wanting to see for quite some time as well, didn't we? In this one, which was uh, one of the new generation fights, as they call them. New generation, they call them, aka uh, little kids. Little kids. Little kids fighting that way. When we looked on our videos online before we came here um, the kids you know, it, it was it was impressive to see them to see them try and uh, you know fight and it was obviously quite novel for us as Westerners to see to see this happen but uh, they didn't seem to have that much technique not not in the videos we had seen beforehand not no. in the videos they were just flailing at each other a little bit they were flailing they had spindly little arms they were just kind of like you know eh, 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 and uh, you know, like I said, respect to them, they were little children, but this fight was not like that. Like, no, I yeah. was quite impressed. I mean, we were guessing the kids, I don't know, they look about 10 years old. Hard to judge sometimes because your 16 year old man earlier didn't look 16. Right, but, uh, right. Uh, they definitely prepubescent by any means. Yeah, uh, without a doubt. But they had very good technique. They were very good at fighting. They, uh, again, like they're children, so they didn't have the strength in the arms to knock each other out. Like, no, you know, the, the, the arms were, but their kicks were, you know, fucking good. Yeah, you like, could hear yeah. them, man. You did, we got a few like, kind of recordings. Man, like these little children, they, they, they were not there to uh, participate. They were there to hurt each other. Like, yeah, and I mean, yeah, they had great movement. They were, you know, covering up. They were, you know, impressive, impressive to say the least. That one ended up in a draw. I mean, 
neither of them was too banged up really because again they're lacking they're lacking the kind of power to truly hurt each other which it's probably a good thing under yeah. the circumstances really yeah uh, well, we'll, we'll probably see in six years or so one of them being in the the chartway role of like because they are really impressive fighters when i was watching it live i felt like it was a draw but when we were watching it back afterwards and we were looking over the footage that we got the, the blue shorts uh, kid I felt was a little bit better. He, he knocked the red guy down a little bit more and uh, seemed to have a little bit of a strength advantage in the exchanges mm -hmm. where he was tossing him a lot. I'd say so. Yeah. Uh, did you have weird feelings about watching kids fight? As much as I have the urge to virtue signal and say that it was uh, it was concerning in any way, I, no, I didn't find it strange. I didn't I didn't think that they really had the power to cause like lasting damage to each other. It was more of an exhibition of their technique and a very impressive technique, as we said. I didn't feel strange about it at all. I felt that we were watching a cultural thing. And and what I what what I really liked was how the Burmese crowd responded to the kids. You know, it was it was a real like they were so noisy. They were so they were they were really cheering. They really made the kids. Like, yeah, they they seemed to take like great joy and pride in you know Letway in general, and then this whole new like that's why they call it new generation is it represents that excitement of like you know these kids could go on to you know make their town or to make their state proud, and you know that's something they take quite seriously here. I think like, exactly it matters to them a lot. You know, we would think nothing of going, and I remember some of the parents shouting from the sidelines when we used to play football when we were kids, and uh, like they were worse than the Burmese crowd, you know, watching the kids fight. There's a much more respectful atmosphere where no one's like, you know, kill him, kill him, Johnny, kill him, Johnny, <laughs> like it was when we were watching, when we were playing football. No, I mean, the vibes were good, generally. Yeah, they yeah. were, and, and it was it was nice. Uh, like you said, it was, a, it was a cultural experience that we were watching, and uh, no, I didn't feel weird about it at all. Yeah. yeah. No, nor did I. Yeah. A surprisingly high quality scrap, I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what would you say was the knockout of the night? <laughs> knockout of the night. Well, I mean, a bunch of those fights even had two knockouts in them, so there's quite a few to choose from. <laughs> yeah, true enough. Um, I mean, I would probably give the knockout to Solon U. Um, especially, we got an amazing shot of, of that and. It was just, you know, it was the culmination of Solanu's, you know, he just gets in close and he clinches you and he just digs you, digs mm. you, digs you, headbutts you, headbutts you, digs you, elbows you. And finally, you know, Kompech just had too much and, as you know, it happened right in front of me. Like, I'd never been that close to a fight before, which is really, really exciting, uh, really thrilling, you know, to just have them get smacked and their sweat comes flying onto you. I mean, it's a little gross on one level, but you know, you're not really thinking about that that much, you know. Like. It was also a bit satisfying because, you know, full respect to Kompech, but he was like, he was being a bit cheeky with his uh, sure. sh showing off a little bit. So, and uh, like I said, I'm a fan of Solon, yeah. so that would be my pick. We're being treated very well by the by the Myanmar locals too, so like I could, we couldn't help but cheer for the hometown boy. And yeah, obviously, you know, Kompech, fair play to him, he's a competitor, he's like, he's given it shit, but what a beautiful combination, you know, mm. he opens him up with the knee, like mm -hmm. slams it in and you can really see the moment where Kompech's, you know, soul leaves his body as you as you yeah, put it like, last there, week. <laughs> yeah. Where he's he's in the game and then he, he, you can see it, he's not there anymore, you know. It it was it was a a beautiful a beautiful move from Solenu and you know, he he lived up to the hype. I would say my fight of the night would go to Chartway though. Like just for 
that like I was like that was I don't know maybe not the most powerful and effective lightweight performance I've seen but it was like the most aesthetically pleasing lightweight performance I'd seen thus far because that's the thing with, with lightweight you know a lot of the fights they're, they're they're not what you would describe as as graceful because like the people are coming in with like you know really just trying to take the other person's head off but Charles Way had a, an element to his movement that uh, the other fighters just didn't seem to have, you know. Mm. It was th th like the other, other people would plod forward, others would not plod forward and, you c and they would get kind of gas early, especially in the earlier, earlier bouts. But yeah, Chartway, he seemed like he had a, a really high fight IQ and you can tell he's being trained by a, a, like a, a legend of the sport in Tun Tun Min because he, he has some tools in his arsenal that uh, you, you just didn't see the other fighters have. Word. Yeah, so what do you feel about the event that we just saw compared to the WLC Battle Bones event that we, we watched last week? Obviously, WLC had a little more uh, razzle-dazzle about it, um, and I enjoyed, as an English speaker, that felt more accessible to me by a long shot. I would say. Um, I mean, as far as like the rule set, the different rule sets, this this event wins every day of the week. I much preferred the kind of fights that result from this. No decisions, it just feels better to me mm -hmm. as, a, as a lightweight fan. With the WLC event, you could really see that the influence from other combat sports in their presentation. You know, they had the pageantry for the walkouts, they had the you know they had the fucking pyrotechnics going and uh, and obviously that they they compromised on some of the traditional let way rule set and it was a very very good spectacle just as we were saying last week on the first episode and nothing away from them because they're really pushing let way forward as a, as a worldwide sport but this event was uniquely a let way event the dancing after the the yeah, the let way yay. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right, but the yay, I'm, I'm not going to imitate it because I would probably, you know, cause some cultural offense there. But <laughs> we'll put up some footage of it just to uh, say. So yeah, but they, they do a cool, cool little dance, which it has very loose movements to it, right? Like it's not aggressive. It's not like showing off their moves. It's, it's just a, a kind of dance. And then they do the little luck moon. Yeah. And it. They had the referees do it at the start, and they so they all came up and they did this dance, and we hadn't seen any of the fighters do it yet, so. I thought that they were just showing off their letway skills, and I was like, "Man, these guys fucking suck." <laughs> but like, then you see the fighters afterwards; they do the same thing. So it is part of the the whole cultural dance behind it. It's I mean, maybe the lack of aggression is somehow designed to cool off tempers after a fight, or something like that. Yeah, mm. possi possibly. I mean, yeah, pure speculation. Pure speculation. Yeah, it, but it, it's certainly like not. They're not. It's not like to exhibit their athleticism. No, no. If you know anything about the Letway Yay, share in the comments. We'd love to learn more. Yeah, please do, because uh, we are still learning as we go here, you know. Um, this was our first traditional Letway event. Hopefully many more to come. And uh, so, wh Will, what's next for us then, mate? What's next for us? Well, we're back to Yangon on the early bus tomorrow. Uh, we got a, actually a second half of the event coming today, but just due to scheduling, we're putting out the podcast, or we're recording the podcast now. Um, after that, we're going to continue with our investigation. Uh, we, we are getting more information on where these Letway fighters train, on more events in different areas. Uh, a lot of them are in Mon State or nearby Cayenne State, but there's some in the north as well. And yeah, I mean, you know, as we mentioned, we are doing a documentary on this. A lot of this footage we're gathering will be put to use in a documentary. And so, yeah, we're just on the hunt to see what stories can be uncovered in Letway. What, what other interesting fighters like Char Tway that are not quite, you know, known abroad just yet, but, you know, they're people worth knowing about if you're interested in the sport. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing some, some smaller events than this even. Um, and also continuing our Letway training, Will. That's right, yeah, yeah. we've been doing a little Letway training ourselves, uh, you know. Just easing into it a little bit, not quite jumping into the ring. Although I did suggest Sean to the event promoter, like he was saying he had a fighter dropping out, so you know, on short notice. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, 
It was apparently it was too late to change it to the Myanmar Thailand Island uh, <laughs> thing. So otherwise, I'd be in there. But you know. But yeah, no, the training it's been fun so far. But they're we're we're getting eased into it a little bit. They're not having us go too hard on the headbutts and stuff like that. So. No, no, and we haven't sparred anyone yet either. So. Uh, all, all to come in the future, my friends. You yeah. know, yeah. Yeah. No, we might have a little Lightweight Lads grudge match in a, in a couple months. Yeah, we've we've we're cooking up a little uh, a little something here where maybe as the as the climax to this uh, these series of podcasts, you know, the two the two presenters throw down and uh, we get to see who the real fucking Lightweight boy is. Yeah, man. Be who's a, the real an lad? Interesting fight. Interesting fight. You know. Post who your favorite is in the comments. So that <laughs> <laughs> and tell him why it's Sean. I, I'm, I'm about four inches taller really? than Sean. Just, you know, you, can, you might not be able to tell. <laughs> it's going to make it all the sweeter once I fucking knock that cunt down. But anyway, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll save that for another day. Um, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah. Um, and we'll come back at you with episode three soon enough, we hope. Yeah, no. Follow us, subscribe. Uh, we'll be putting out more podcasts, but as well, here on our regular film channel, we'll be putting out some... Lightway highlights in general and just updates about our documentaries in, in Yangon. Yeah, and thanks for everyone who helped us to, uh, you know, get the media passes, to told, tell us about the event, and we'll leave some description, some links in the description for you to go check out other stuff. Thank you. All right, see you next time.